forget good things, I remember you. Somebody say amen. That's how I love the man of God. So today, I'm not the one preaching. We are so honored that God has sent us somebody from all the way from South Africa in the province of Limpopo. The man that I'm about to introduce to you, personally, I fear him because he carries a great anointing upon his life. He falls in many categories. The man that I'm about to bring to you is my friend, as in, and now he's a friend of Bish, uh, Pastor Jamin, and he's going to be your friend too. Now, uh, before wasting any other time, allow me to usher in the man of God. But before I bring in the man of God, I want to tell you a little bit about him. The man that I'm bringing is called Bishop Dr. Jerry Malole. He's pastoring one of the biggest churches in South Africa. Over 5,000 memberships seated together, seated down. He's a man who is a civil worker with the government both in uh, immigration and also is heading the Department of Agriculture in the country of South Africa. He's also a man that is doing various business. He's into farming, into fishing, into poultry. Oh my God. And he's a man who is into, into uh, other many businesses. Travel businesses, has buses and other things. So that is not all that important. But he carries the great anointing. So together with me, may you rise up on your feet. Before I ask him, there's something I want to tell you to prepare you. What has caused his ministry to be great? One major thing is one. He has been praying for people. When they get their miracles, they bring one another, one another, one another. So I believe today, if he prays for you, something is going to happen in your life. If things have happened in South Africa, they are going to happen here tonight. He's a man that has traveled in Asia, Africa, America, Europe, and from this mission is going to France. But before France, we said, please come down and be a blessing to Uganda. So allow me with a great shout. You know how we Ugandans uh, receive men of God. I want you to shout uh, with a great shout as you clap, as you celebrate. Uh, the man from all the way from South Africa, Bishop Jerry, Dr. Jerry, come to preach to us in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, can we appreciate God by clapping our hands? While we are taking our seats, I just want to greet the angel of this house. Pastor Jamin Luke, for allowing me to stand in his altar. Thank you very much, men of God, for allowing us. Amen. I don't want to take it for granted. Indeed, it's an honor. Hallelujah. Amen. So, children of God, my name is Bishop Dr. Jerry Marol, all the way from South Africa. Bamuita Bishop Dr. Jerry Marol, of South Africa. I'm a man of God. I'm a married man. Yes. With one wife. No Hallelujah. Amen. I thank the Lord for allowing me to be here in this ministry today. 
And I just want to tell you, you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Uh, I said you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Hey! I'm coming. You don't have to worry. I will come to you. So I'm leading a church. It's not a small church. It's a big ministry. Down in South Africa. South Africa. The carrying capacity of our cathedral. It's 5,000 seats. Hallelujah. Amen. When I start preaching, I am a man who is a hard worker. And I want you to encourage me by doing hallelujah, amen, and then you clap hands. Hallelujah. Am I talking something to the people here? Huh? Why am I telling you this? It's because I'm carrying anointing. And anointing that I'm carrying will open doors to you today. The anointing that I'm carrying will make the closed door to open in Jesus' name. Ha! So, if you encourage me, you will be stirring the anointing that I'm carrying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are not many here. So I will be able to pray for you. I will be able to ask from God so that he can do something in your life today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So thank you very much once again, men of God. I'm going to start preaching. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready for the message? Are you ready for the way? Ah. <laughs> you see, in the jungle, in the jungle, do you know a jungle? A jungle. A jungle is a dense bush. And in a jungle, you find the wild animal. So in the jungle, the elephant is a big animal. In the jungle, the giraffe is the tallest. Am I talking something to the people here? Ah, hey, hey. The elephant is big. And the giraffe is tall. <laughs> you see, the giraffe is the tallest. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. And the cheetah. What is the cheetah? The cheetah. No, I'm trying to find it in the local language. <laughs> you must be first so that you see the anointing that I have. I just want to. You see, God uses men to raise men. And God uses someone to take you to another level. That is why I'm encouraging you to shout hallelujah so that the anointing that I'm carrying will do something great in your life in Jesus' name. I don't try to speak my God. Because he is a greater God. He is the God who opens way. He is the God who will uplift you. He is the God who is ready for you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So in the jungle. The elephant.
elephant is big. In the jungle, the giraffe is the tallest. And in the jungle, the fox is the wisest. And in the jungle, the cheetah can't run very fast. But above everything, the lion is the king of the jungle. Yeah. The lion is the what? Is the king of the jungle. Even though the lion doesn't have the same quality that the elephant have. Even though the lion doesn't have the quality that the cheetah, the fox, and the giraffe do have. But the lion doesn't have the quality that What makes the lion to be the king of the jungle. It's because in the mind of the lion, the lion always used to say, I am courageous. You will say, I am courageous. And the lion will always be bold in everything. And the lion doesn't fear anything. And the lion have got confidence. Children of God. Why? The lion believe in saying Whatever I face, I will take. Whatever I face, I will devour. Whatever I face, I will get rid of the fear away. Am I talking something to the people? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love the spirit of power. In the book of Philippians. Where? In the book of Philippians chapter 4. Verse 13. You see Paul says. Paul Agamba, I can do all things. Through Christ. Who can strengthen me. Oh, yeah, man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I talking something to the yeah, people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says he can do Agama, sobolo, kola. all things. E, bintubyo, na. Not one thing. Sichi, tu, chimu. But everything. Na, yebu, li, chi, tu, cho, na. Through Jesus. Oh, kuyita, mu, yesu. Who strengthens me? Oh, yeah, man. Children of God, remember in the book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4, God says, whatever is written in the Bible, whatever is written in olden days time, it is written to teach me and you. So today, Paul says he can do all things. If Paul can do all things, you can also do all things in Jesus' name. Because you are empowered, you are empowered to trample on top of the scorpion and the snake. In other words, as a child of God, you don't have to fear anything. Everything good and perfect gift is for us. 
In Jesus name You don't have to beg anything Everything good And perfect gift Belongs to us Because we are the children of God Hallelujah Learn to encourage yourself Get rid of the negative spirit in your mind. Because many people, when you remain in poverty, it's because you don't know who you are carrying. The one we are carrying is a greater God. The one we are carrying is the honor of silver and gold. The one we are carrying can open the way even in the desert. He can open the way where there is no way. Am I talking something to the people? The time to talk and think the negative thing is over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't understand the people of Africa. Do you want to be happy in heaven? Why are you rushing to go to heaven? You have to have good thing while you are still alive. Talk to your neighbor where you are. Say, neighbor, do you know that our God doesn't want coward people? Many people they are coward. But it is whatever they think day and night is a negative spirit. And that negative spirit must die from our mind in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, we must flow in the blessing of our Father. We must move in the blessing of the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. All the doors which are closed in your life must close must open in Jesus name what is then that you want that God cannot give it to you you see a child of God must have a heart like a lion if we have a mold of a lion a lion's mode is a winning mode. A lion's mode it's a way for us to progress. That is why when you read from the book of John starting from verse 12 you will read it at home. God says when you are in me, uh, you can ask whatever you want. You will receive it. And he keeps, and he keeps on saying, you will do even more. In other words, what our father has not done on earth, we can do it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Am I talking something to the people there? We serve the living God. We serve the faithful God. The God who opens way where there is no way. The problem with the saints. They are always asking forgiveness. Why are you asking forgiveness? Even if maybe you have done a sin, if you ask forgiveness from God, you forget about the past and focus forward. You run to your victory rather than you move asking forgiveness. 
Because when you always ask for forgiveness, you are locking yourself in a cage. And you cannot do anything. You are like a chicken which is, which is closed in the cage. I reject to be in the cage in Jesus' name. I reject to be closed in the cage in Jesus' name. God wants people who represent him. Because we are the ambassadors of him. You see, when you don't encourage yourself and know that everything is possible to you, you make other people not to repent. Do you know why? You are like a gate. You are closing for people to enter the church. Because do you think a rich person can come here in the church? A rich person cannot come to this church. Because of you, you are a gate to, to, to block them. Do you want to know why? Because everything good and the perfect gift are there from Jehovah. And you don't have the positive mind to retrieve them. You don't tell yourself that that thing belongs to me and I will have to take them by force. So, rich people will tell you that you are telling me to come to your church. No, I cannot come to your church because you are poor. And they will say, I don't want to follow the Jesus who is poor. Little did they know that Jesus is the owner of life. Little did they know that Jesus is rich in everything. The problem is we who are following him. When we don't ask, when we don't seek, when we don't knock, nobody, you cannot get anything. Do you think it is a mistake when God says, seek, you will find. Knock, the door will be opened for you. Ask, it will be given to you. You are always silent. You close your mouth. Talk to your neighbor and say, that closed mouth of yours must be open in Jesus' name. I said, that closed mouth of yours must open in Jesus' name. Let me tell you another thing. God walk with those who are walking. Katonda atambla na baba tambula. Eh? You sit down, he cannot do anything for you. Botula taina cha sobala kukolera. And God, he work. Era katonda abera akola. With those who are doing what? Waking. Na baba kola. But if you sit down and say nothing, you will remain in poverty. You will remain in one place. You are not going to receive anything. But that is not the will of God. The will of God is that you must be productive. The will of God is that you must be successful. The will of God is that you must achieve in Jesus' name. So you, because you are quiet, you think things will come your way while you are sitting. You are doing a mistake, my brother, my sister. Do you remember when the Israelites, while they were released from Egypt, they were happy because they were out of slavery. 
They met the Red Sea. While they were there, they saw the Egyptian coming. You see, the Egyptians were not coming to play a football with them. They were coming to do three things. Because the wicked one is graduated in three things. He has got a degree to kill, to slaughter, and to destroy. And when they see the Egyptian coming, they started to cry and say, you Moses, why have you taken us from Egypt? Egypt, we were in slavery, but we were eating, and the graveyard was there. You see, when an African man <laughs> is used to poverty, <laughs> even though you try tried to take him out, he will still remember and the heart will still look back. <laughs> my friend, my sister, my brother, you will be like a pillow of salt like Lord's wife. Because God says, let us move forward and don't look back. You are looking back. What do you want back in Egypt? So they started to criticize Moses. They talk the nonsense they want. Until, Until Moses did a mistake. He started to call God. Hey, Father. Hey, blah, blah. Hey, the Egyptian. Hey, the sea is closing. Nonsense. And God says to Moses, 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 Musa, Musa. Why are you calling me? What are you holding by your hand? Why are you suffering? While you have got a weapon, why are you suffering? Why you have got a weapon? Why are you not using your weapon? Do you know the weapon that you have? What is your weapon that you have? The weapon that we have. It is faith. And prayer. Faith and prayer will make the impossible possible in Jesus' name. So God says to Moses, Why are you calling me? What are you holding by your hand? Take action. Rather than calling me. Indeed, Moses, he stretched the rod to the sea. The moment he decreed and declared. And said, you see. Open the way now. So that my people. Can can pass pass in a dry place. The sea because everything on earth have got ears. The sea listened to Moses. <laughs> and it obeyed the voice <laughs> of the man of God. Children of God. When you decree and declare. Everything will listen to you. And the The problem with us. Is that. We don't want to open our mouths. And, and decree and declare. And 
This thing, they've got ears, but they cannot do anything because they never heard the voice. The voice of a child of God is the voice of the Lion of Judah. The voice of a child of God is the voice of the King of the King. When you speak, it must open the way. When you speak, it will see it through. In Jesus name. Am I talking something to the people there? The problem, you are very quiet. And if you are quiet, you will die in your cradle. In your cradle. Do you know a cradle? A cradle, this is a baby. You put a baby here. That is a cradle. So, if you don't cry as a child, if you don't cry as a child, you will die here. Hallelujah. A child who doesn't cry, he will die in the cradle. And an open mouth. Gula wakamwa. Hmm? A closed mouth. It's a closed destiny. Game again that go gadde. Eh? Do you understand what I'm saying? Meaning that you keep quiet. You are not going to reach your destiny. You must be aggressive. That is why. There is a verse in the book of Matthew chapter 11. Verse 12. Which says, It was started by the time of John the Baptist. Yes, that the kingdom of God suffers what? Violence. And it is the violence who will touch it by force. If you are not violent, you will remain in one place. Talk to your neighbor and say, my brother, my my father doesn't want a coward person. Because coward people have got negative mind. If you don't have the positive mind, the mind like that of a lion, where you encourage yourself, where you get rid of the spirit of fear away, where you become bold, and said whatever I will face I will receive in Jesus name whatever I face I will devour it in Jesus name many of us we are remaining in one place why because the spirit of fear is full in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know that to fear is a demon? Do you know that? Fear doesn't come from God. Fear comes from the devil. Let me give you an example. When Jesus uh, was walking on top of the sea, the people who were in the boat, like even Peter, they saw him coming. But they started to say, is it a ghost? And, and Jesus said, I'm not a ghost. The, first, the, the, the following word he said, fear not. Meaning that fear is a demon. Fear doesn't come from God. He says, Fear not. It is me. You see, because Peter was stubborn, he says to, to Jesus, 
if it is you, call me to come to you. And Jesus answered simply, come. Indeed, Peter, he walked on top of the what? Of Peter, the in the sea, there are many storms. He saw the storm coming. Fear struck. And when fear struck, he started to sink in the water. He, he shouted and Jesus took him by the hand. And he said, you of little faith, I told you that you don't have to fear. Many people are failing to reach their destiny because of the spirit of fear. You must have a heart like a lion. Because a lion carries a heart of the son of David. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I talking something to the people? What is that that you want that God cannot do it to you? God is ready to do whatever you want. That is why all the things which is written in the Bible are written for us so that we can receive whatever we want. Myself, I reject to be in poverty in Jesus' name. I say I reject to be in poverty in Jesus' name. I can, I become a poverty person while my father is rich in everything. I will keep on seeking. I will keep on knocking. And I will keep on asking. Because it is written in the Bible that I am a head, I am not a tail. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a faithful God. Whatever you want in this life, the power are upon your hands. Do something because you can do it. Because you can make it. You see, they, I, I love myself. I don't believe in failing. Wherever I arrive, I'm not an ordinary person. Because the one I'm carrying, his name is Jesus Christ. He's powerful in everything. Why should I suffer? While he's alive. Why should I suffer? While he's alive. So children of, of God. From today. I'm here to tell you. That you can do all things. You can achieve all things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because Jesus is still alive. And he's ready for us. He's ready to see us through. In Jesus name. What we must do. We, we must go. align our mind. We, we must think positively rather than to think negatively in Jesus' name. What is then that you want that God cannot give it to you? I'm telling you today it is possible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I talking something to the people? If you fail to tap to me today, you don't know what you are doing. And you don't know what you are in need. Man of God, I have got a grace. That grace, when I enter every church, if the church is not moving fast, uh, I have seen that. Uh, you see, you will see some wonders. You will see some wonders. 
the thing which is closed will open in Jesus' name. I remember one time I was called to another church. The problem is that they called me, it was on Sunday. They said, after church, men of God, you must come. We have got a conference. And because in our church, I believe in praying for the people, I become tired. But my wife managed to drive me. When I arrived in that church, I was not a guest speaker. I was just going to attend. <laughs> I saw more than 40 pastors. Ah, they were going to the man who was going to preach. They greet him. I said to my wife, my spirit doesn't want. I in the car until all the people enter the church. I was the last to enter the church. When I entered, the, the church was full. The host, he said, Dr. Marole must come and sit closer to me. I went there with my wife, we sat closer to the host. While it was time for the prophet to stand up and started ministering, the men of God started to shiver. He says, God is talking. God is saying, there is a big man of God here. And that big man of God, he's here because God wants pastors to tap from him. He says, even if you can attempt to take the soil where his legs are and you throw it in, the, in your family or in the yard of the church, you will see something great. He says, I cannot preach. I'm going to kneel down so that the man of God can touch me uh, so that I can be able to preach because you can see I'm shivering. That man of God, he swallowed the pride. Oh, people, they were looking because he never showed. He came to me and kneeled down. I pray for him. The moment I lay hands on him, he started to have that strength. Strength to minister. And all the servants of God, they came, they kneeled down, I was laying hands on them. Do you know what happened? The church, their churches are moving fast. In Jesus' name. You need me, I need you. And God uses men to promote men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For you to become uh, uh, whatever you will become, you need someone to usher you to that place. In Jesus' name. But above everything, let us sharpen our face and our prayer. Because faith and prayer is the key. But it is not the key, it is the master key. The master key can open all the doors. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You will make it. All the doors which are closed, they will be open today in Jesus' name. Because we serve the greater God. The God who is above everything. When we are going to get a song, 
when we are asking the worshippers to come back while they are going to give us a worship song I am going to lay hands on you I am going to pray for you I don't know what you are in need that God cannot provide to you it's a matter of opening your heart where you are so that God will intervene. Remember, Remember, for you to receive, it comes from your heart. If you are ready to receive, you will also tap in Jesus' name. Where you are, can you stand up? You open your heart, you close your heart, be ready to receive the greater God will do greater things in your life while they're coming with the worship song in Jesus' name. Oh my God. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, King of Kings. Come with the worship song. We are going to worship the Lord. I'll be touching you in Jesus' name. And you close your eyes, open your heart, be ready to receive in Jesus' name. I'm telling you, greater thing is going to happen in Jesus' name. Lord, in the thing I Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Oh, my God! Everything I
name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jehovah. Thank you, King of Kings. We honor your holy name. We exalt you. Oh, thank you, King of Kings. Let your will be done as it is done in heaven. Father Jehovah, I decree and declare the open doors in this ministry, the open heaven in this ministry. From today, rise them up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh my Lord, thank you Lord. Thank you Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we clap hands for Jesus? Can we give a round of applause to Jesus? The God we serve is a greater God. There is nothing that God cannot do. It's a matter of changing our mentality. We think the positive thing always rather than to go for the negative thing. While we are in this spirit, we are going to give in Jesus' name. That if you remember in the book of Luke chapter 5, when we read from verse 1, I will just explain it. We are not going to read it. Jesus was in the sea of Gennesaret. While he was there, people were pushing him. And while they were pushing him, he wanted to fall in the water. But later on, he saw a boat. The boat was for Simon Peter. And Simon was busy cleaning the net. And then, he borrowed that boat to Jesus to be like a pulpit. So our father, he sat in the boat and he started preaching the good news. After he had finished, Jesus said, Simon, bring your net and put it where it is deep. Instead for Simon to do what Jesus was telling him, he started to talk, 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 talk. It was not the time for talking. It was not the time for gossiping. It was already Jesus was his father. He knows that they suffered the whole night without catching anything. But now because Simon did something, Simon gave a boat to be used in the church to be used as a pulpit. Now God wanted to reward him because there is no sweating that you will do even here in the church and God never blesses you. Are we together there? When you suffer for the sins of God, God will reward you. So it was time for Jesus to reward Simon who failed to catch fish the whole night. He says, put where it is deep. Not that Explain to me what you, you failed. So he put the net where it is deep. The Bible says they catch more fish. And their net were about to turn. What makes Simon to catch more fish? It's because he gave his boat. So that it can be used as a, an altar. So, I'm telling you today, this is the right place where you can sow your offering. This is the right place, this is the right soil where you must put your seed. I'm telling you, all the seed that will be sown here in the church, it will germinate and it will grow, you will reap. In Jesus' name. Today, 
take your money where you are and hold it by your right hand. You close your eyes. I'm going to pray in Jesus' name. You take your offering. You, you hold it by your right hand. But what you must know, the offering that you are holding, the Bible says, you cannot mock God. Whatever you sow is what you will reap. The value of giving, if you are giving one cent, you will receive the blessing of the value of the money that you have given. The woman of Zarephath, she gave bread. So the value of the bread makes that woman to have the oil and flour non-stop. It, 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 it was a mistake if maybe she was thinking that she gave the man of God bread and hoping to get a car. It doesn't work like that. When you want to, to receive a car, you must sow very hard. The value of what you are sowing must also be the value of what we are giving. Simon catch many fish because the value of a boat if you go to the shop, the, the boat is expensive. Am I talking something to the people there? So while you are holding what you, you have, I'm going to pray in Jesus' name. King of King, Lord of Lord, Father Jehovah, we exalt your holy name. We praise you, Father God. I commit your children who are holding their own offering. Bless them, Father God. And open all the closed doors in their lives in Jesus' name. And allow your will to happen as it is happening in heaven in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come and give in Jesus' name while they're giving us a song. Come and give so that you can give, you can sing for us. Oh my God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you, Jehovah. We thank you, Jesus. Come with a song in Jesus' name. Amina. Uh, 